Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. It's a pleasure to have you joining us for worship this morning. Let's begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in these words, we now take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now read our intro for today. Today's intro comes from Psalm 13, verses 3 through 6. We'll read responsively, and your words will be found in bold on the screen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning with verse 21. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their hosts by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. 
He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall feel exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes, If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the 29th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told Jesus about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, the crowd brought to Jesus all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And Jesus healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there Jesus prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found Jesus and said to him, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. And Jesus went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth May the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds, be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, and I think most of you know I'm a diehard Kansas City Chiefs fan. And these last few seasons, it's been a lot of fun being a Chiefs fan, especially last year. Finally getting to watch the Chiefs play in a Super Bowl, and even better yet, watching the Chiefs win a Super Bowl. I remember last year watching the victory parade on my computer in the office. Parade ended at Union Station in Kansas City, so you have this massive crowd gathered in front of Union Station. The whole team is up on this big stage. One of the players walks up to the microphone. 
can't remember who it was, but I can remember what they said. They said, this is a lot of fun, but we're not done yet. We'll see you all here next year because we're going to run it back. And that became the theme for the 2020 season, this last season for the Chiefs. Run it back. They made t-shirts, uh, rally towels, posters. I even found a country music video about the Chiefs running it back. During this last season, the Chiefs have had one goal, to run it back and win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And tonight, the Chiefs have the opportunity to do just that. If they win tonight, they will pull off the rare feat of being back-to-back -back champions. And what makes that feat so rare? Well, first of all, you have a shorter off-season, so less time to rest and prepare. Second of all, it's the Super Bowl. Every team wants to be in the Super Bowl, but only two teams can play. So it's difficult to get into the Super Bowl. And then third, you're the defending champions, which means every team that you play in the regular season is going to bring you their A game. They're going to give you their best shot. And we saw that this last season, how many games were close games because every team was gunning for the Chiefs. It's a tough uphill climb to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. It takes grit. It takes determination. It takes self-discipline. You got to keep pushing yourself. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep going. It's a tough uphill climb to live out the Christian faith. It takes grit. It takes determination. It takes self-discipline. You gotta keep pushing yourself. You gotta keep fighting. You gotta keep going. In today's epistle reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul compares living out the Christian faith and sharing the gospel to running a race, to competing in an athletic competition. He says, you all know that in a race, Everyone competes to win, but only one person wins. So as you live out your faith, as you run this race, run to win. Every athlete practices self-discipline in order to win a prize that will not last forever. As Christians, we need to practice self-discipline in order to win a prize that will last forever. Paul says, that's why I don't run aimlessly. I always have the goal in mind. I don't box at the air. I always make sure I hit my target. I've trained my body. I've disciplined my body so I can keep it under control. I don't want to be disqualified. As Christians, we're all running a race with one goal. That goal being eternity with Jesus. And here Paul reminds us that we have a long race ahead of us if we're going to reach that goal. So as we're running, we need to run to win. We all have one adversary in this race. That would be Satan. He'll do all he can to disqualify us and keep us from reaching the goal. So Paul tells us to practice self-discipline. That means spending regular time in God's word, reading your Bible every day. That means coming to worship every week. That means turning to God in prayer every day. That means resisting temptation. It means keeping the commandments. And that's not easy. There will be times where it seems that life is just too busy. I don't have time to read my Bible today. There will be times when it seems other things are more important. I'm, I can go to church next week. There will be times where it seems God is just so far off, so why even bother praying? He's not going to hear me anyway. There will be times that the temptation will just be too great. Besides, it can't be that bad, but I did. And there will be times that you just plain 
don't want to keep the commandments. We're all in a race, racing towards eternity with Jesus. And to reach that goal, we've got to exercise self-discipline. But even the most disciplined of athletes at times will stumble and fall in the race. And perhaps it's as we're stumbling and falling that we're tempted to think, God mustn't care about me. Because if he cared about me, he wouldn't let me fall. God doesn't understand how difficult this race is. God doesn't understand how tired I am. God doesn't know what I'm going through. In our Old Testament reading from the book of Isaiah, God says in response to that, he says, how can you say that? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know I've created all things? I am in control of all things. Who would you compare me to? There's no one like me. How can you say I don't know what you're going through? I'm the only one you can trust. I'm the only one who can help you. I never get tired. I never get weak. I never faint, and I give my power and my strength to those who are tired. Even the most disciplined of athletes grow tired and weary and faint, but those who hope in me will renew their strength. They will soar through the most difficult of circumstances, just like an eagle soars through the harshest of winds. They will run, but they won't get tired. They will walk. They won't get faint. As we live out our Christian faith, as we run this race, as we grow tired, as we grow weary, as we begin to faint, as we stumble and fall, we are not pointed to ourselves to, for strength. Instead, we are pointed to God. We are appointed to Jesus. It takes grit. It takes self-discipline to reach that goal line. But ultimately, he won't bring our grit, our determination, our self-discipline that will get us across that goal line. It will be Christ. Christ, who even though he was tired, as the crowd kept coming to him, asking him for help, even though he was tired and needed rest, he kept going. He kept teaching. He kept healing. He kept driving out demons. And he got tired. He tried to get away so he could pray, so he could get some rest. But every time Jesus tried to get away from the crowd, the crowd found him. Now of compassion. Jesus kept going. He kept loving them and helping them. Wasn't easy. Not only did Jesus have this huge crowd to deal with, constantly demanding his time and attention, he also had the religious leaders, a group of people who hated Jesus, who wanted to trap Jesus in his words, who wanted Jesus dead. But Jesus didn't get up. He kept going. He kept going all the way to the city of Jerusalem. Now, at first, the crowd was excited. They waved palm branches. They shouted, Hosanna. But by the end of the week, the crowd was shouting, crucify him. Jesus was stripped of his clothing, beaten within an inch of his life, mocked and spit upon. It was painful. It was agonizing. But Jesus kept going. He kept going all the way to the cross where he shed his blood, where he took his final breaths, where he cried out, Father, forgive them, where he died for you. And as Jesus died on that cross, taking his final breath, crying out, it is finished, Jesus finished the race and carried you across the finish line. As Christians, we're all running a race, and 
we all have one goal, that is to spend eternity with Jesus. As we run the race, we seek to be faithful. We seek to be obedient. We seek to be self-disciplined. But again, even the most disciplined of athletes will stumble and fall. As we stumble and fall, we trust in our Savior. We trust in Jesus, who through his own grit, determination, and self-discipline, has won for us the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life, bringing us across the finish line. So keep running the race. Keep living out your faith. Keep going. Keep trusting in God's grace shown to you in Christ. And I'll see you across the finish line. Amen. I now invite you to join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to the Lord in prayer. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demon, disease, and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you those in any need. Hear us, Lord, especially as we pray for those names that we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. That concludes our service for today. Uh, one big announcement I want to share, a reminder that we are getting closer and closer to Ash Wednesday and the beginning of the season of Lent. February 17th, 7 o'clock, we'll have our Ash Wednesday service here. We will have the imposition of ashes. We will be serving communion. I want to encourage you to join us for that service. And then the following Wednesdays, each Wednesday between now and Easter uh, at 7 o'clock, our Lenten series. Uh, this year, our Lenten series, our theme is Places of the Passion. And this is a fun one. At least it's been fun for me working on it and preparing it. Uh, we're going to tour different places of the Passion, different places that play a significant role in the Passion account. That would be the story of Jesus going to the cross. And we'll learn about the importance these places play in the story of salvation. Uh, we will, of course, be meeting for worship here in person beginning February 17th, each of those Wednesdays, 7 o'clock. But if you're not able to join us in person, we will have online services available as well. And I hope you'll join us one way or the other as we tour the places of the Passion during the season of Lent. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.